Hello everyone, my name's Jack, otherwise known as the Avid Assistant, and in this video I want to talk about syncing in Avid Media Composer. Now I know long time viewers of the channel might be wondering why I'm bothered going into this since I already have two full, you know, long videos uh, going into this in great minute detail um, in the uh, Avid Assistant Editor 100 course. But that's kind of the reason. You see, in my attempt to teach what I know and my way of doing things and in terms of the essential tasks for assistant editing, I ended up rec making my recording for uh, syncing rushes during the AE100 course inordinately long. It was over an hour long. And so I split it into two parts. Now, when you look at the data and the statistics of who's watching the videos, most people who watch part one don't actually come back for part two. And a lot of the questions in the form of comments that are asked by users on part one are actually answered in part two. So just the majority of people aren't coming back to watch, even if they've watched all of part one. And I do take a lot of the blame for this, not just for making the videos, you know, quite long, but also because uh, the initial method that I showed in terms of syncing on a timeline is probably not the most common or the most popular method used for syncing. While it may be the method that I prefer, some people find it slightly slower and it's not even really the go-to Avid sponsor method, which would be Avid's autosync. So in this video, I'm aiming to go over the two main methods of syncing in Avid um, a bit more quickly, a bit more succinctly, and then I will leave links at the in the video description and at the end to both parts of my, you know, long detailed Avid syncing videos. If you wish to look further and look at those, they'll be there. They're not going anywhere. They're going to stay. So you can go and look at those after if you like. But as for right here and now in this video, let's do what I maybe should have done in the original videos and start with auto syncing in Avid Media Composer. So when you're in your Avid, if you have a number of picture files and a number of sound files and you want to sync them together into synced clips that, you know, have the double system sound as well as the picture, then probably the most common way to do this and the way Avid would like you to do it is to drag both of these clips into one bin, select all, and then right click the selection and hit auto sync. Or you could also use the bin menu or the clip menu from the top, or you could have auto sync mapped to a key. There's a number of ways to activate auto sync. But once you have activated auto sync, this will be the window that you are faced with, your sync selection. And this is very, very simple. All you are looking to tell Avid is the method by which you want to sync the clips. So if the clips have matching time code, which is very common in um, scripted film and television workflows, um, they'll use time of day time code, then you'll select source time code. So that's going to be the same. If you've had to manually set a sync point, so say you didn't have time code and you want to sync by the, by the slate, just navigate to the clap on the sound, leave an in point, navigate to the clap um, visually and um, where, where the sticks finally touch on the video, leave an endpoint, and then in your sync selection window here, select endpoint. But then of course, if you had audio on the picture as well, if you had guide sound, you can also sync by waveform. Just select waveform analysis in the sync selection window and Avid will get it all synced up for you. And you'll be able to create successfully a synced subclip. Yeah! Now another thing to mention here before we move on is that we also have the option to choose which tracks of audio make it onto our subclip. For example, one reason why you might want to do this is it's very, very common in Avid Media Composer workflows uh, to work with sync subclips that only contain the mix track. So they don't contain all the channels of audio. So every channel with the, the boom or uh, your various radio mics, all of those ISOs, your sync subclips will very often only contain the mix track. So your mix chat's generally only on A1, or if it's a stereo mix, it might be on A1 and A2. So you would just need to select the range where your mix is, and then hit OK, and your sync subclips will only contain those tracks. Now don't worry, you can always load it in the source monitor, hit match frame, and you'll jump back to the sound file that this came from at that exact same frame, and you'll be able to patch on any additional audio tracks that you need. You, you know, these aren't lost, and it's, it's very simple to get access to them once again. And that's more or less the gist of AutoSync. Yeah! Well, more or less, a couple of little caveats to mention. If you've made your sync subclips using time of day time code, um, so you've used your source time code, which is probably the most common method, it's never really going to be 100% accurate. I've never came across a single shoot where it was guaranteed 100% perfect sync every time. 
usually will be out by one or two frames and occasionally even towards the second half of the shoot day it can drift more out of sync if it hasn't been rejammed during the lunch break. This means that after you've got your sync subclips you're going to have to load each one one at a time and check the sync using the slate using the clap. So you want that sound of the clap to be right on the exact frame where the sticks touch each other. When you inevitably come across some clips that aren't perfectly in sync and they're one frame out either side, the way to go about fixing this if you've used auto sync to create your subclips is to use audio perf slipping. Now in order for this to work when you first created the Avid project you're going to have to have ticked that this is film. Um, if you haven't I suggest creating a new Avid project, copying the bins over and making sure you've ticked film this time and you might have to import your sound again um, once film's been ticked. And what this will allow you to do is to use the slip audio perf keys, slip one perf, um, so that's one quarter of uh, a frame. And so you'll be able to use this key with the subclip loaded in your source monitor to slip the so sounds left and right. Um, I usually just hit it four times or then eight times because I'll just slip one whole frame at a time until your subclip is 100% in sync. So you will have to go through all of these clips to make this slight adjustment. Even if they are fine, you have to just check the sync. And while you're at it, you can go through and name these subclips so that they're not just dot sync dot zero one. You'll probably be naming them, you know, as per the slate. The other little caveat to mention here is that um, a batch auto sync on a full shoot day is probably going to result in a number of tiny, tiny little one frame sync clips um, or or around 10 frames, you know, you know, those really small ones which will just be where there's a time code over, overlap between some little bit of picture and some little bit of sound and you can feel free to delete those. So once you have all, all of your sub clips created after you run AutoSync, you can sort by duration and those super, super tiny ones, you can just get rid of those. Right, now method number two for syncing with an Avid Media Composer would be syncing by timeline. So this essentially just means laying down some picture onto a timeline and then laying down the sound underneath it, adjusting so that it's in sync, and then you just mark the region with the video and select the tracks that you want on your sync subclip and use the subclip command to make a subclip. And you can find the make subclip command in the edit tab of the command palette ready to map to your keyboard. Now when these first come out, they, they will look like a little sequence that's really like a subsequence command. But all you'll have to do to turn this into a sync subclip is to select that little sequence and run auto sync. Um, it won't come up with the sync selection window, it will just turn it into a synced subclip. Now I normally run this process right at the very end after I've subbed out all of my sync clips from my timeline, which is often referred to in the industry as a sync map. Now there are multiple different ways to build a sync map and this will vary depending on what exactly it is you're trying to achieve and what the setup is with your um, picture and sound. If we're in the same scenario we're talking about before with auto sync where uh, we have time of day time code, what we'll do is select all the video and hit auto sequence. This auto sequence command can be found everywhere that the auto sync command can be found and this will create a sequence with all of your video clips placed on it in order of time code. So you'll end up essentially with a sequence that is as long as the shoot day was from the first record of the first clip to when they hit cut on the final clip of the day. And so they'll all be spaced out with giant spaces in between. Then just drop that puppy into a sync bin, then run the same process on your sound clips. You'll get essentially the same type of sequence with just with sound. Drop that puppy in the same sync bin. Then you're gonna to wanna to duplicate the video sequence, not the sound sequence, probably the video sequence, in order to build the sync map. Reason why you're going to just start with the video is because whichever one you start with, if there's a conflict in metadata between the two at any point, so say the scene column is filled out as per your ALE with all your video clips, and the scene column is also filled out from the sound recordist um, in all the sound clips, whichever of these two sequences you start with to build your sync map, that one will take priority in terms of metadata inherited by the subclip. So just to be aware of that. And I will have up on the screen that now the name of the very brilliant user on YouTube who pointed this out uh, when I initially uploaded my syncing video on YouTube. But carrying on, after you have duplicated your video audio sequence, you're just going to want to drag and drop your sound auto sequence into your source monitor and then just checking the starting time code of the sound sequence, jump to that exact same time code on the picture sequence or vice versa, just find a point with the time codes matching between the two and lay in all of the sound. Now at this point you will have a timeline with all of your video aligned and all of your sound aligned 
in perfect sync as per the time code. And you can just go through one by one and subclip these out and make sync subclips. But as you get to each instance before you subclip it out, it's very, very simple to just click on the sound with the segment tool and nudge one frame right and one frame left or as much as needed to knock it into perfect sync as with the slate. And then I will always have subclip mapped to a key, subclip it out, type the name of the slate, then jump back to the timeline and move on to the next one. This is the method I've used for over 10 years on a variety of different projects to sync my rushes. Now I can already hear some people saying, hey, what if you don't have a matching time of day time code though? So what do you do then, huh? Well, in that case, we still have multiple options. We can just drag and drop all of our video onto the timeline. It'll just get dropped and laid all the way in. And then we can cut in our sound manually as per the slate just have to match the scene and take number on the slate with the scene and take number on the sound file. Majority of the time, these will be perfectly accurate. If they're not, just need to do a little bit of investigative work to find the right one and then cut it in and it'll be in perfect sync because you've cut it in at the right point as per the clap. Another way, if you have guide audio, is to lay down all the picture on a timeline, then lay down all the sound underneath it, right click and select waveform sync and all the clips will be rearranged and moved around to sync via waveform. Any users who have ever used a, an app called Pluralize, this is a very similar function and works in a very similar way. Now, if any of you in the audience are wondering why I prefer this method over Avid's good old reliable autosync, it's because one, it leaves you afterwards with a perfectly synced sync map, which you can go back to at any point. If there was a clip that wasn't in perfect sync, if you made a mistake anywhere, if somehow all the subclip bins got deleted and you had to recreate them, the, the, the sync map is there and you can just subclip them out again and make perfect replicas of the subclips. And two, I really like this method because say I'm working in a 25 FPS project and stuff is shot at 50 frames. So similar if you're working in 24 FPS and stuff shot 48 frames, just a, a double of slow-mo or really any multiple um, of frame rate in order to get slow motion clips. Uh, before I subclip these clips out, I can apply a time warp on them to re-speed the clip. I usually prefer this method to tinkering in source settings or using motion adapters uh, since it comes through perfectly well in an AAF and delivering to DaVinci Resolve or online and allows us to have a perfectly re-sped clip playing in real time sync to sound um, in a really easy way. Plus, just as a number three here, contrary to popular belief, I actually find this method a lot faster. I find if I'm going to auto sync and I have to manually double click to load each clip one by one to check the slate and then rename them, I find that to be a bit of a chore. Now, I know I can use an ALE and duplicate that information over um, to populate my, you know, slate information in the name column, but it's not always 100% accurate and I need to go through and manually check it anyway. So I'd rather just go through my timeline as I'm making the subclips and name them at the point of subclipping from the sync map. Because once you get accustomed to having your own keyboard shortcuts, and I'm not even talking about macros here, which I do employ to great use, um, but putting even a site on mac macros, just a basic Avid keyboard with the subclip key, with not even much changed from the, from the default keyboard, just adding the subclip key, I don't think it's any slower at all than autosync. In fact, I personally think I am at least much faster using this method. So there you go, there's an overview of the two Two primary ways of getting sync subclips within Avid Media Composer that you can then take to populate your scene bins and arrange in different ways and use to cut your story together and go and make beautiful on-screen stories. If there's any other part of Avid Media Composer workflows or film and television post-production workflows in general that you'd like me to speak to or talk about and do a tutorial on or do a little dance while I'm talking about, just let me know down in the comments and I'll get right to it. But as for tonight, I'm getting shouted on for dinner, so I need to get going. See you next time, guys.